Are we live? Yeah. Hello. My name is Dragonfangs. This here is... Hello, I'm Zonorus. I played this game like once or twice before. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. Imagine that. Um, yeah, you yeah. played it like three or four times. At least. Uh, so yes, this is uh, Metroid Zero Mission. It's a remake of the original Metroid, released in 2004. And uh, let's just get right into it. So uh, I'm just going to press this button uh, and go. Yeah, let's go. You can get and read the lore of the game. That's pretty much it. Here we get a mission from the Federation to go kick some, uh, kick some space pirates in the face. And so we do that. Um, so Brinstar, uh, in general, like the first area, is actually really like technical. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, just mostly just a lot of really annoying platforming uh, in the first few uh, rooms and like a lot of RNG. But it uh, should be fine. Be fine. So occasionally the game has these statues um, that show you the way. They show you the <laughs> next uh, upgrade you should grab. It's now telling me to go get Longbeam. Uh, we'll be getting Longbeam in about uh, 40 minutes. So yeah, we're uh, taking our sweet time of yeah, getting we're, we're that Longbeam. Yeah, we're not really listening to these statues. They're, they're mostly skippable. A few of them. That one is uh, mandatory. Uh, most of them are skippable. We're going to be grabbing one more just because uh, taking, like, going around it is just too much of a hassle. But in general, the game has a lot of uh, like hidden passages and ways to bypass the intended route. But all of these are, most of these are intended by the developers, so it's just like intentionally made very open and lets you do kind of whatever you want. So the start of the game is pretty much set until we get two bombs. When we go to bombs, we uh, get a lot of freedom to go different places. But first, we're gonna fight this boss. Uh, you, I can try to hit two missiles on the same frame, but I, I fail. It's, it's hard. Um, that could skip a cycle. Uh, it, it's very tough, and it's mostly a, a bit random if you get it or not. And we're gonna pick up charge beam. Um, it is technically faster to just ignore the death animation from the boss, run out of the room, and come back for charge beam later. But charge beam is just actually kind of convenient to have uh, early on. And there's no good time to grab charge no matter when we do it, so we might as well just grab it at the earliest possible time. Uh, when you have a full charge and do a jump, you actually damage enemies uh, on contact. Which is really useful to not uh, to not have to stop in places. This room is a nightmare. <laughs> uh, all of these bugs are completely random, and you have to like kind of adjust based on where they are. We have uh, setups that makes this pretty nice, and that was that was good. Good. Yeah, that's uh, he just made it look way easier than it can be. I can like waste quite a lot of time if you don't get it like that. It's kind of descriptive, like early on when you yeah. when people start learning the game, it's, uh, it's the room that like defeats people and yeah. makes people grab long beam early. Yeah, you need to kill these hives with missiles, but you only have six missiles and they each take like three to kill. So if even one, you miss one, you need to use your normal beam and the normal beam takes like forever to do enough damage. Yeah, missiles do about... A missile does 10 times the damage of a normal beam, so they're, they're very, a very useful resource, especially early on, before you get any beam upgrade. Uh, so here we have bombs. Uh, and right away we're gonna run into a, uh, a thing in this game where there are a lot of uh, viable different routes in 100% uh, that you can pick a match regardless. So at least uh, right here it's an, uh, a, a choice of going up to the upper parts of Brinstar and cleaning that up right away, or coming back to do that before, right before Turian. Uh, and in terms of time, they're basically equivalent. They're they're like very close on time. But uh, doing it early takes a lot of technical skill in terms of like doing bomb jumps and uh, like very failable rooms. I'm gonna see if I can get through those. No, okay. I'm gonna have to wait for the cycle because I screwed up my movement a little bit. 
while oh. we wait for the cycle, do we have time for a quick donation? Uh, yeah, sure. We have five dollars from Stratus Nova saying, "Go, Dragon Face! <laughs> Expect you all to kick all the butt. Show us all why you're the source." Thank you, Stratus is my my friend. He's a good guy. Yeah, this is the second statue we're uh, just gonna show. This one is actually really long and kind of a big uh, annoyance. And why doing this later uh, is actually almost the same speed because you get to skip this statue. Uh, but doing it early lets us get uh, one extra energy tank and a couple of extra missile tanks, which are really useful uh, in crate and in warfare in order to in order to not die, uh, which is something I'm inclined to do at a marathon. Yeah, if you get there, uh, like later, the statue is gone because the objective the statue wants to give you, you like already done it, and so it's kind of pointless to give you that. Yeah. Also, these bomb jumps he's doing there are like really hard. Like I can't do them, for example. Yeah. So those bomb jumps are the reason why yeah. you might not want to do this route because even if you mess up like one of them, you end up losing time compared to just like doing it later. Yeah, there's like the advanced strats if you're like, if you done a few few runs and you like want to improve your time further, it's time to learn like proper bomb jumping or like the faster bomb jumping. Uh, so up there to the left, uh, which we runners tend to forget sometimes <laughs> to mention, uh, yeah. is the Varia suit, and we are not grabbing that item because when we unlock Gravity Suit later, we are actually given the Varia suit item, not the Varia suit effect. We're given the item uh, Varia, which counts for percentages in low percent. So even though Varia is completely skippable, it's part of the lowest percent we can grab. Uh, and but in 100%, it means we just don't have to pick up the item since we get it later. That bomb jump is yeah. also really scary and hard to do. Like doing double bomb jumps is already like pretty like time intensive, but doing them like square, I mean like diagonal, that's like pretty tough. Especially doing them consistently. Yeah. So from here on out, we're just gonna go down to crate. So uh, you can take and uh, read off your donations. <laughs> it's. Our the host is busy. <laughs> the donation reader curse. Why can I not place a bomb here? There we go. Thank you. Um, so, uh, normally, if you don't take the upper path and take the like the quote-unquote easier path back, uh, you will go have way less ammo by now which ends up being really annoying in crate because you need a lot of ammo for one boss fight and one sort of mini boss fight, I guess. It just takes a lot of ammo. And you don't actually have enough just from grabbing tanks, so you need a couple of drops from enemies, and they can be uh, very, like, strange. And don't, like, they're, they're kind of mean, usually. Like, I'm not getting any missile drops. Thankfully, it's re this route, it usually doesn't matter. Like we didn't express uh, like specifically mention this, but we're doing like the 100% here. So yeah. uh, just in case you don't know, it means we're gonna collect every single collectible thing in the game to uh, get the 100% message at the very end of the game. And during the elevator rides, I would like to say a donation. Yeah, go ahead. $10 from Hike saying, just wanted to show some support for my fellow member of Mega. Good luck with the run. Thank you for your donation. Thank you. Hike is a member of, of Mega, which are our local like gaming like group of people. Uh, so coming up, we're going to get to uh, Acid Worm. Uh, Acid Worm is, uh, like, like was that, a very ammo-intensive fight. Uh, but also, in general, in Crate, there's a lot of, like, small bomb jumps and stuff, and, like, 100% is usually kind of, like, daunting for people to learn because of all these bomb jumps you have to do early on. Oh, well, that's... Uh, okay, I still made it. And this fall down here is obnoxious. I hate this fall. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
it's really hard to get. Yeah, and if you hit that block and then somehow wall jump up and get in there again, it's oh, it's. Yeah, the timing fine. is pretty tight there. Uh, so this activates the zip lines, so we can hit these switches, and these zip lines can carry us across various pits. Uh, and this is where you would stop and farm a bit if you're low on missiles, but thankfully we have uh, more than enough. This fight takes 30 missiles. Yeah, coming up is, like you said, the uh, acid war mini like boss fight here. Like we have this cool uh, little strategy where we just jump into like the acid and shoot him from like uh, oh whoops it is under, oh. and it makes the fight really easy because we have. Yeah. Enough health to like just sit in oh, the missiles. Mm, yummy. <laughs> ah. That boss has a tendency to health bomb you a lot because you take a lot of damage during the fight. Uh, and while we're going back to the main path, we can take a donation. We have a ten dollar donation from Easy saying. Thank you for saving me from the terrible TV program. Have a good <laughs> run, smiley face. Thank you for your donation. It's our pleasure. Again, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm uh, really good on missiles, right? I need the 20 for the upcoming room. Um, after, after that, it's pretty generally okay on uh, missile management for the rest of the game. So that should be good. There is uh, a fair bit of health management in Norfair that we'll get there later. Yeah, since we now activated the zip lines, we can like go to uh, the main boss of the area, so to speak. I mean, we could there could go there like regardless, but like uh, a trick you do in any percent, but you still need to go to the acid worm to collect the items and stuff he has over there. Yeah, so you might as well do and, and yeah. go beat the boss early to have make this room way easier. Yeah. Do not do this obnoxious skip you would do in any percent. Oh, unlucky. A bit too far away. Yeah, these guys are also pretty tanky. Yeah. How many missiles did it take? Like 10? 10. 10, ten yeah. per enemy. So that's we need 20 in this room. And if you if you're some for some reason short, it takes forever. Because like we said, a single missile is worth 10 beam shots, so you just have to sit there. If you're missing like two missiles, you have to sit there for like five seconds just spamming your beam to make up for those two missiles. I mean, if you would have gotten the long beam, then you would do like slightly oh, yeah. more damage? Slightly more damage, yeah. So uh, every beam, regardless of which beam it is, just increases the damage uh, of your beam by one. Uh, when you're starting at two, so it, it progressively gets bigger. Except charge. Charge doesn't increase your damage, it just lets you charge your beam. Oh, oh no, I think no. I missed it. Yeah, you can catch that on the way back, but it's tough. Okay, I'm just gonna take the ball cannon. There are way too many rippers. So, coming up, we are going to grab our first unknown item. Uh, the unknown items are a thing where they try to add like, some mystique or something, I don't know. Uh, these are items that are not in the original game. This is uh, yeah. very sneakily, like if you know the icons, you can tell that this is Space Jump already. Um, spoiler. Spoiler. Spoilers. I mean, you can tell. Yeah, um, only if you know the game. Yeah. But I mean, you, if you don't know the game, you don't even know what Space Jump is. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, fair. But we uh, those get activated later on uh, for a, from a later boss. Ooh, this guy's not weird. So yeah, like no, the that's fine. you can't get the actual item you pick, like the effect of the item. But picking up these unknown items lets us like destroy these like blocks associated with the symbol of the unknown item, which like um, progresses the game without picking up the unknown items. You can't really progress. Yeah, so, so these blocks can yeah, only exactly. be. Uh, can only be destroyed when you have the corresponding unknown item. Exactly. The coming up is one of the more difficult bosses in 100%. Uh, yeah. I'm usually pretty good at this, though. The big Bing. boy. Easy. Oh, nice. That was good. That was really smooth. That's good. That's good. Um, and while we're waiting for Kraid to be really upset for a couple of seconds, we can uh, <laughs> go ahead and read a donation. Sure. We have $5 from Destructor saying something and Xenaris. 
Nice to see you running some more zero mission here at ESA. Good luck on the run and give us that soothing, perfect stealth music. Thank you for the donation. Those five dollars can, for example, provide the education supplies for one child, giving them the tools they need to continue their education and have a better life. So, thank you. Yeah, fellow member of the Zero Mission and also Fusion community, I think. Yeah. He also has the 100% world record of the ROM hack that I'm playing, like I was playing what, earlier. Deep Freeze? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, shout out to him. Uh, so, yeah, we just picked up Speed Booster, which, uh, if you follow the lore, you might also know that that is not an uh, item in the original Metroid game. But for some reason, they didn't consider that an unknown item. Like, they just. They yeah, have kind of arbitrary rules of uh, what's considered unknown and what is not. Uh, but we appreciate it because Speed Booster is a really fun item for uh, someone trying to go fast. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess this is kind of like a staple item now in Metroid games, and you can't just wait until like the end of the game to get it. Especially for like how important it is. Yeah, so Speed Booster lets us, after you run a certain amount of time, you gain a lot of speed and start being able to break speed blocks. Uh, and you're also able to, by crouching, store a so-called Shine Spark. Uh, and that is stored for about three seconds, I think. And uh, you can then use that to, like you saw me do a couple of times, just like shoot through the air in a specific direction. That uh, also still breaks certain blocks. Uh, it's used for uh, more effect later on. Yeah, you basically just charge up the the excess energy you get from like running fast, and to like use it in, to uh, dashing into something. Oh, oh. that's close. Okay. Oh, there we go. What he's doing here—that's also pretty difficult. Like jumping in the air, going into the ball, and like jumping back up. What what do you call these? What's the, the technical? The, so you jump up, uh, plant the bomb, and then fall down to the ground and jump up again. And you have to like unmorph and morph and really fast. It's really annoying. So we're gonna see uh, shine spark here, hopefully. And yeah. So in this game, which is uh, not a thing in Super, but I think in the GBA Metroid, is that if you shine spark into a slope and keep holding the directions, you start speed boosting yeah. again. Uh, and you can do that to make long chains of, of shine sparking and recharging and, and whatnot. You basically go from shine sparking back to just regular speed boosting and you can like chain them together to do some really cool looking crazy stuff. Uh, I think this is a good time for a donation as well. Sure, we have five dollars from Wania saying, Mr. Face, oh. you are the best. Annalie and I are cheering on you. Thank you for your generous donation. Thank you. We're on our way to our next unknown item. Um, this, technically, it's weird because this, um, the unknown item coming up is actually not required to beat the game, sort of. It's really weird because um, you also, in order to get out of this area, you also need to pick up power grip, which again lets you grab ledges, but like the actual effect of power grip isn't needed to beat the game. Uh, it's not even needed to progress, but picking up power grip... Uh, oh yeah, right, I remember. Yeah, and I guess they just put that there because they didn't want people to experience uh, playing the game without power grip, because now that we have a randomizer, we know that playing the game without power grip is terrible. Yeah, and they, <laughs> they were kind of self-conscious, like their level design allows for not having power grip, and they kind of figured that out, and they were like, uh, nope. And they just put a, like, a barrier which you can't skip if you don't get the power grip. Yeah, so we're doing a sort of fancy chain of Shrine Sparks to get super missiles pretty yeah. early. This is uh, an uh, advantage of going to crate first. Exactly. Which is uh, in hundred percent not really a choice. In any percent, you can go either create or Ridley first, depending on um, what you want to do. Usually, Ridley first is considered the faster route. But uh, and getting super early is really nice. Here's the power grip, which is also in tool assisted runs. Uh, I also do tool assisted runs of this game, by the way. Power grip is by far the most powerful item in the game. 
Yeah, when you play this game casually, um, you like now backtrack a lot and you like go from places everywhere. Like you, you go around like crazy, it's kind of dumb. But in the speedrun, it was optimized pretty well. Did you just go into one area, finish pretty much everything, go to the other area, finish everything there, and then like reduce backtracking as much as possible? Yeah. So the reason power grip is really useful in two assisted runs is that when you do a uh, wall jump in this game, uh, you have sort of a short four frame frame animation of her like actually doing the wall jump. Uh, but if you grab a ledge and then jump off the ledge, there is only one frame where you grab the ledge, so it's it's a lot faster than wall jumping. Yeah, now that we got the cool power grip, we're going through uh, North Fair here, which is probably kind of the most difficult-ish or like hardest part about the 100% run, is like at least early on. North Fair is uh, definitely the most complicated part of 100% uh, routing. We've redone the route for North Fair multiple times, and we still have like three different viable ways to get through this. Uh, I'm going to pick the safest one because I am a coward. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a good point though, um, because the both of the uh, Metroids for the GBA have the thing, if you die, uh, you just respawn the last time you saved, but in speedruns we generally don't save, that means if Fangs would ever die, it's kind of yeah, rip. Bad, it would not be. Yeah. yeah, but he's an expert, so Aww. don't worry about it. Kind work. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so the, the route I'm using here is you usually, the point is usually that it, you take less heated damage so that you can uh, not take a health refill. So you're able to skip a health refill later, but I'm gonna take the health refill anyway. Because Norfair is scary. And there are, there are certain rooms where if you fail, like, not very difficult platforming, but if you fail certain jumps, you just end up down in the lava and you take so much damage, you virtually die on the spot. Yeah, the game kind of wants you to have Varia Suit, the, the item we skipped earlier because we got it later regardless. Um, but it turns out like we don't really need it, we just take a little bit of damage. But like he said, if you're not careful enough, it's a little bit uh, scary, but it should be fine. Yeah, so there's surprisingly actually pretty few heated rooms in Norfair. Most of the rooms are like actually normal temperature, so you don't need Varia. It's like a weird mix. We're gonna try to get a refill glitch here. Let's see. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah. Oh, sick. So you're able to um, pick up the item and refill your ammo at the same time, which basically just skips the text box for your item time-wise. Yeah, what's the, the, the frame thing on this? It's a uh, the setup I used is a three-frame window to get that. You guys heard it? Three frames. In a 60 FPS game. Yeah. That's pretty insane. It's a c pretty cool trick. And again, Norfair is such a mess of uh, available items to grab and stuff. That's why routing is very difficult. But we're going to leave a lot of it for later. Uh, we, because we need to come back here after we get gravity anyway. But there are a couple of items that you need to uh, come back to right after, like after we got into the end of the game. And there are like there's like one in Create and one in Warfare, so we try to save as many items as reasonable for the late game when we have like stuff like Space Jump and the Gravity Suit to make things faster. Yeah, this here is the room he mentioned a little bit earlier with the lava. So we're already taking damage from the, the room being hot. Uh, if you have Varia Suit, you don't take that damage, but if you fall in the lava, you take that damage. And now, if you don't have Varia and fall into the lava in that room, you take like triple damage or something. It, yeah, it hurts. Your, your health drains like, not instantly, but at a pretty rapid speed. We're quickly gonna use our newfound screw attack to get rid of these enemies, which used to take 10 missiles, so screw attack is a useful item. Yeah, it turns out screw attack is a pretty cool item, pretty useful. What does Wave Beam do you just got? Wave, wave Beam lets you shoot through walls. 
Um, it's not that useful. It's useful specifically in the coming room. <laughs> Because we need to, yeah, of course, classical metroid game design. Because we need to break all these blocks, and your normal beam would just disintegrate upon reaching the block, and you just can't shoot fast enough. You're supposed to use waving to kill that, but shooting missiles through the floor is faster. So. A little fun fact about wave beam is, it shoots through walls, but not through enemies. Mm. There's a different beam who does like the reverse. It shoots through enemies, but not through walls. Oh, nice. Okay. So that's a two-frame window to get this break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that shine spark is really difficult. Uh, it is the cornerstone of this route even being viable in the first place. And he um, just casually does it. Casually. Uh, if you miss that, there are the, the backup because this game has like the open route thing. Uh, there are several tricks where if you miss the trick. The fastest way to like recover is to do a completely different route. It's usually faster to like go a completely different route than like redo the trick because the routes are so close together in time. So that specific trick, you can fail the uh, like storing the shine spark either too late or too early, and both of those have a different route backup depending on what you do. But thankfully, I got the I got it, so I can get to do the fastest way. So we are now picking up Ice Beam, which for a while uh, wasn't picked up until after Ridley, but we have found uh, certain applications of Ice Beam. Oh. Ice Beam has weird edge cases, coding-wise, that makes it very prone to... Like, almost all the major glitches we found in this game are related to Ice Beam in some manner. Um, and, at, like, two of them are useful to us, but... <laughs> Uh, one of them we need in Ridley to save uh, a bunch of time. So we do, even though this looks really unintuitive, just going down to the bottom of North Fair, then going back up, and then going back down again, this is faster than not taking ice beam. Yeah, like you said, the, this entire North Fair section here to like collect everything as like efficiently and safely, like depending as possible. They're like, like you said, three different routes, four different routes. Yeah, it's a mess. It's. It's kind of interesting, but a mess, like, depending on your viewpoint, I guess. I am happy it's a mess, because, like, this game is a very interesting project just to try and to figure out the route, and we've, we spent a lot of time timing different things and having really dumb ideas, and having some smart ideas, and sometimes dumb ideas work out better <laughs> than smart ideas, because we, it's hard to think ahead. That was a mini-boss, by the way, just, like... Hey, easy. Nice. Not even... Like that boss, that that's not really that. Like even I can do that mini boss. There are really hard strategies for that boss that I can't do, but uh... does it save any time though? Yeah, you can like not wall jump, but it's, it's really tight. Oh. You can just jump up the side when you have high jump, but it's difficult. Well, I mean, technically we didn't kill the mini boss. We just defeated it and yeah, kind of so... escaped. So we went down the elevator, which kind of maybe looked funny, but we need to go down the elevator in order for this this boss fight to trigger. Easy every time. Yeah. And uh, we need we need this for more super missiles. Yeah, that one is not too hard. Like the boss fight, you just kind of need to get used to like a little bit like the mashing. This trick here is also pretty cool if he. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> Uh, store like Online. recharging the shine spark there is really tight, but it's not a big deal. You can just take this secret path through. Yeah. It's just a kind of a style shine spark. It just it saves, saves like a, a little. Second. Yeah, it, it, it saves like cool. a second. It's kind of hard. No, 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 no. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! I almost saved it. <laughs> I swear, if you would have gotten that, I would have like left. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, this E tank here is like can troll you quite a lot. If you, if yeah, if you fall down, it, that's quite annoying. Okay, so this trick coming up is the glitch we needed Ice Beam for. Oh yeah. Um, so there's a thing in the game where if you stand on top of two frozen enemies at the same time and then kill them both on the same frame, this happens. <laughs> so you just kind of get teleported down to uh, the spawn point of those enemies. In, under very specific circumstances, it's, it's hard to make that uh, like consistent. It just happens that in that room, 
uh, all the things needed to make it work kind of line up really conveniently. So you can do that in a lot of places, but this is the only room we find where it's actually useful. I'm gonna park it. It's uh, such a cool little thing and kind of interesting how it works, like the specifics behind it. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you're supposed to power grip there, but I, I could tell I was a, a few pixels too low, so I had to hold on. That was a bit scary, actually. Recovering on the spot. I kind of want to bonk here. It's, okay, yeah. Uh, so you can either bonk there, uh, or you can go Shine Spark through the entire room, and they're mostly the same speed. Like, like all the things in this game, everything is mostly the same speed. Uh, but this lets me pick up more drops, and I kind of want another super drop before I get to the boss. There's another little kind of difficult like chain. Yeah, so these puzzle rooms are like the bane of, of casual players. These puzzle rooms are oh, yeah. really difficult when you like when you if you haven't played the game for thousands of hours. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and it's really scary like all these blocks turning, but it's like when you're used to it, it's not that difficult. Especially if you can't like wall jump because wall jump is not a mechanic that ever gets explained to you yeah. if you play the game casually. It's just a thing that exists because it's a Metroid game. Same as with the ball jumping. Now this coming room is just like actually yeah, difficult I mean, though. There's no like it's just uh, there's just a, like a three to four frame window on this jump, and there's like that's just how you're supposed to do it. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> and, like everyone misses. Like world record runners miss, miss that occasionally. It's just it's, it's just a tight jump. There's nothing interesting about it. But that's how they decided to design that room. It's weird. I would really like... Oh, thank you. <laughs> I would really like a super drop, I was about to say, but I didn't even get to finish my sentence. I think there's a good room for a donation? Yeah, sure. And we have one. $35 from Mobius Man saying, oh, yeah. Good luck, Dragon Fangs. I'm glad you're still carrying the torch for Zero Mission. I hope everyone has a great ESA. Thank you very much for your donation. And do we have time for a little message? Yes, absolutely. So, Safe Children is helping... <coughs> Sorry. Safe Children teams have helped cut the number of children dying before the age of five by over half since 1990, saving 122 million lives since then. So, in just 30 years, they did so much more. And every dollar you donate to it help save even more children. So thank you everyone donating. Yeah, so I, I fell down there. That was that was not intentional, but I, I uh, was able to come back up using speed booster. Falling down there in any percent where you don't have speed booster is a much bigger problem. In 100% it's just a, a minor inconvenience. I just want to oh. quickly need to thank you because I did not know you can like shine spark back up. I yeah. did not know this there were like shine spark like yeah, those, speed the, blocks. Those are speed blocks. So you can, if you have speed burst, you can use shine spark back up. It's way easier and way faster than trying to do any of the backups. Yeah, when I fall down, which I mean, it doesn't happen that much because I know it's like I would just go around again. Yeah. <laughs> it happens like once every like 50 runs or something. It's not it's not that difficult of a jump. If you stand in a precise spot, you can shoot through the, the beam of the idol. Also, shout out to Mobius Man, another runner of the game. Oh, yes, Mobius is uh, an old school speedrunner of this game. He uh, started running about when I did back in uh, 2013, uh, yeah. when we did the, the big rerouting <laughs> of 100%. Before then, uh, the 100% round was kind of just done by feel, they didn't really test stuff. Sorry about your ears. Oh yeah, this guy exists by the way. Uh, yeah, say bye. Yeah, it really is a, an absolute joke in this game. The the optimal strategy in, in any categories, not not low percent actually, but in both any and 100% is just to run into him and pump missiles. Yeah, if you have enough health and like enough ammo, you just stand inside him and like spam all of all what you have and you'll probably be fine. So now that we have killed uh, Ridley and Kraid, we are allowed access into Turkey. I'm gonna oh, okay. Um I was kind of low on super, so I decided to go back there, but I only got one drop. It's 
Kind of cute little secret passage here with a hidden item. And yeah, now since we've killed Ridley and Crate and can access the final boss, well, kinda, the we uh. Supposed final boss. Supposed final boss? Hmm. I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. We're gonna make our way there, and on the way, we're just gonna uh, take a few more items that are just on the way there, or that we now have access to, or either are a little bit slow, uh, faster now than. Uh, oh, instead man. of grabbing them earlier. So the owls have a really good drop rate for supers. Um, you don't usually get all of them there, but it's like it, you're pretty good usually. I'm full on supers now, which is really good. I want to have as many supers as possible for Terry and coming. Yeah, now we're just gonna we're gonna take this quick screw attack shortcut. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get back to Terry. This is where you would go and do the rest of Brinstar if you hadn't done that already. Yeah, exactly. What he did at kind of the start of the run, you would do now if you like did the other route. Yeah, so now you have a high jump, you have a screw attack, you have a power grip, you have a wave beam. You have a lot of uh, upgrades to make that area faster. But because you have to go back there, it ends up being roughly equal in time. Uh, so here we're gonna pick up uh, one of the, like, there are a couple of items that are really hidden for uh, a casual runner, or like, like a casual player when you're first playing, there are like three or four that are, like, you can, you can kind of find them, but then you have no idea how to get there. <laughs> and this is one of those, you're gonna yeah. see the, the intended way to get this uh, right here. Yeah, this was also an item, or is an item as a, like, a casual player, or as like, me as a kid was like, how how do you like <laughs> how is it humanly possible to get there? how are you supposed to get here uh, and I, I i uploaded a video of uh, how you grab that in any percent where you come from below and it's that's not intended but like if you really if you're really good at platforming you can uh, get it without going all the way to the right um, and people started commenting thinking that was like a tutorial on how to get the item in the first place and they were like <laughs> this is really hard yeah, you, do you guys remember like long beam, which the game t told us to get at like the start of the game? Oh yeah, we found yeah. it. Yeah, we finally found it. Like, whew. Woo. that was a hidden one. Yeah. But now our beam actually reaches full screen. Uh, finally. You yeah, were yeah. both of the opinion that long beam should not really be an upgrade. You should get, you j just get it from the start. Like, yeah, come on. Have it. Uh, so we've been, on in several places, we've been substituting a long beam for, like, using missiles uh, to reach things that are uh, too far away for, for our short beam to reach. But now we have uh, all, yeah, we have all the beam upgrades. One of them isn't activated, but we do have oh, picked yeah. it up. Yeah. Scary, scary cutscene. If you have never played a Metroid game in your life, this right here, is a Metroid. Metroids are terrible. We hate Metroids. Uh, both lore-wise and mechanics-wise, they are very, very random. There is. Do we really hate them lore-wise? I mean, there's I mean, one Samus does. I personally Not really. am fine. Some, there's okay, yeah. one expe exception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> baby. The baby. The baby, the baby. But yeah, so Metroids move very erratically. Uh, they're hard to pin down. Thankfully, you can just freeze them as soon as they spawn. But they also have random spawn times. Uh, so depending on like when you get to where the uh, Metroid, ooh, nice. the Metroid ooh, spawns, nice. it has like a random timer before it actually shows up, uh, which can really disrupt things if they end up being really slow or really fast. Yeah, the only way you can kill Metroids is you have to freeze them first because they're just vulnerable to oh, like oh, whoa, 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 calm down. And yeah, then you shoot some missiles. I don't remember, do super missile uh, power bombs work? No. I mean, you don't have any. You don't have any. That's like a super Metroid thing, if I remember. I actually don't remember. Like, since we have randomizer now, we can technically get here uh, with power bombs. Uh, but I don't think they do anything. So we're also kind of at the mercy of the drop RNG. Yeah. Where I think uh, a Metroid has about 10% chance to drop a super. And we just need, like, we just want as many supers as possible because these supers are just faster than missiles in all respects. Yeah, he uh, needs four super missiles for, like, the upcoming boss fight. 
So whenever he gets a super missile, he can use it for a Metroid. Uh, if he's stuck on four missiles, he needs to use like the regular missiles, which is a little bit slower. But uh, I mean, if the drop rate is not in your favor, there's like nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and that was that was okay in terms of drops. I got a couple double drops. It's nice. I uh, elected to save two extra supers uh, since I got a super drop right at the end, and having a couple of extra is actually pretty nice. Even though four is the actual minimum. You need. Oof. There's a safe spot can be right here. I'd like to introduce you to a big brain. Also called the uh, mother brain. Literal galaxy brain. <laughs> Literal galaxy brain. Uh, and yes, it, when when mother brain has died, uh, she kind of she she doesn't turn into a wall per se, but uh, the game keeps pushing you to the right back. Uh, so if you keep running against her her dying corpse. You still build speed booster speed, so you can have speed booster going on going. Yeah, that's the like escape. the only time in the game where you can do something like that, like running against something, and you still beat like build up speed for speed boost. You you can actually do that against crate too. Oh really? Uh, yes, but oh, like yeah. but like oh yeah, you don't, you don't have, have yeah, speed yeah. booster. <laughs> that's like a randomizer thing. And time. No. I don't, we're, we're not gonna do the fake out. This is the usual. No. Uh, no. So this is where the original Metroid yeah. game ends. Um, but Zero Mission uh, has a little part after this. After this uh, long cutscene. So if you wanna talk about, do any messages? Oh right yeah. Now, fine. We have some cutscenes here, so feel free to pluck stuff. Sure. We are watching these amazing speedruns on Twitch. So what is Twitch? Twitch is a service operated by Twitch Interactive, which is a subsidiary of Amazon. And this has led to some synergies to the, with the company's subscription model, Amazon Prime, because this gives us Twitch Prime. And you can use your free Twitch Prime subscription to sub to ESA Marathon so that your sub Goes, to, uh, uh, goes directly to save the children. Also, any cheers you do, any normal subs, everything you can do with this channel, every single penny goes to save the children. So consider subscribing, cheering, anything. Thank you. Right, so this is the suitless segment. This is where Samus was caught with her pants down. Uh, <laughs> shot down without a suit and for, didn't have time to put it back on before she crashed or something. Um, a, a lot of people kind of dislike this part, um, and it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of strange in uh, in a speedrunning sense. But I, I kind of like this part. It's very it's very deterministic and like it's a lot of nice platforming and things. Uh, yeah, this part here is like the reason why I don't run this game more often because I, for me personally, I feel like it, it's a little bit out of place. And also, because he, because of the donation incentive that was met, we are going to yes. do this without getting detected. Um, I am saving here in case I screw up this, these first two rooms that are actually kind of difficult, so I have to, I'm going to have to reset if I screw this up. This first part is really difficult to not get detected by. Oh, nice. First try. So far, so good. That is a lot more difficult than it looks. Um, and we can see if I can get this uh, tripwire skip as well. I'm... I'm this is also, it's kind of tight. After this, it's m more of like knowing what to do and it's not technically that demanding. Nice. Oh, nice. So now we get to listen to the much nicer uh, stealth music. Since as soon as any alarm triggers um, and after that alarm runs out, it, it switches to a much worse audio, <laughs> much worse BGM. But now we get to listen to this nice, uh, relaxing, Stinky music for uh, the rest of the suitless. Yeah, normally when you uh, do 100%, you trigger the alarm on purpose because it's just faster. Um, yeah, but because you're, uh, yeah, also because you're in a suitless right now, these space pirate enemies, like, there's no way you can like defeat them with your beam. The only thing your beam does is like freeze them for like a couple of seconds. And only if it's fully charged. Yeah, and only if it's fully charged, which you can see on like the top left corner. 
which is sort of accurate. It's kind of it can it starts blinking and showing that it's fully charged before it's actually fully charged. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> it's like a couple of frames early. So if you just go by the meter, you you might shoot uncharged shots when you when you don't want to. And what he's doing right now, the perfect stealth, is just going through this entire thing uh, until uh, you get back your full suit to not be seen by anything at all. Like basically, you were not like you never existed. And uh, so far, we we kind of just been doing the normal strats except for the first few rooms. Uh, but coming on, we're gonna have to do some some tricky maneuvers too. It's not get detected. Uh, you don't have to do that power grip there. I just do it for safety because like doing you can just run and do a normal wall jump, but it, it's kind of tight. Uh, and in a normal one, if you get detected there, it doesn't matter, so you, like, you don't care. Um, also, shooting that pirate, he just makes a noise and then <laughs> decides he is not paid enough to follow this, this uh, wild girl. Uh, so he just kind of chills. He just got like... It was just a mosquito or something, probably. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> Now we changed the area a bit. Earlier we were in, a, in the, like the ship of the space pirates, now we're in some random ruins. Oh yes, the, the ruins of the Choso, which if you're not caught up on Metroid lore, is the, uh, the ancient bird race that raised Samus after she was orphaned. Exactly. They, they gave her the uh, power suit she has and a bunch of other stuff. There's a hidden little crevice here to hang on so you can freeze this guy. I did not know that existed there. No. <laughs> uh, so we can do a couple of donations uh, as we go through the rest of this. Sure. We have twenty dollars from Tommy Roth with no message. Thank you. And ten dollars from Lord Alu saying, "Ah, glorious zero mission." <laughs> Best of luck on your run, Dragon Fangs. 100% best percent. Thank you very much. And another $10 from Crunchy Legs saying, I'm glad that when ESA decided to include Zero Mission, they went straight to the source. <laughs> best of luck, <laughs> Dragon Fangs. All my best to you, Zonaris on the couch, and the whole Zero Mission community. Y'all rock. <laughs> Heart. Yeah, I mean, it's not wrong. This guy is like a living lexicon of this game. <laughs> he, he knows so many like little details about this game. Like, it's I, insane. I, I know a lot more about the game than I can actually perform. <laughs> it's so, okay. This room is kind of tricky. There are a lot of pirates here. Uh, but if you go through it the, uh, with the, uh, the correct timings, everything should be fine. Yeah, the pirate doesn't know how to look at things. He's very busy staring at the wall. Um, and this is supposed to have some kind of fake tension, since you're not supposed to get through the previous room without getting detected. So you kind of have a pirate crawling after you, and it's at all, ooh, really scary, except he's the exact same speed as you are, so you just hold left the entire time. Uh, and this room, you can also, if you go from the correct position before, you can just hold left and they never see you. And that was uh, perfect stealth. Yes. Yes, please give a clap. Like, that, that's pretty insane. I watched him practice earlier, and I think during practice, I never seen you do the perfect in like a single go without <laughs> getting detected one. So, yeah, that's really, really, really impressive. Yeah, that. during practice, I usually needed like, uh, like three or four tries to get through the first two rooms. The first two rooms are the, are the difficult ones. Yeah, the uh, first two and the tripwire room is a little bit annoying because yeah. the timing on the jump there is like kind of awkward. Yeah, I'm happy to get that first try. That was yeah. nice. Cute cutscenes, by the way. <laughs> Cute cutscene of baby Samus. Uh, she, aging very rapidly. Yeah, she just remembered. Remembered uh, the good old days where she had parents. <laughs> 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 Oof. <laughs> and now this boss fight kind of, I mean... Boss fight is kind of annoying. He just kind of sits around and occasionally it becomes vulnerable and then he starts moving around and occasionally becomes vulnerable you just kind of have to wait until you decide uh, shooting yourself like i just did actually gets you a faster timer for the next uh, glyph to appear yeah, this is i don't know 
a little bit of like a lazy boss fight, I guess. Like in terms of design, it's just wait for the symbols and that's it. That was a really good fight, actually. Yeah, I know that as well. But yeah, so normally we don't take uh, the <laughs> refill at the start of... Also, this is a glitch. <laughs> You're supposed to stand and look up at your own reflection, but if you turn around during the like the very short like two or three frame animation where she turns towards the, the the mirror you can just like press left or right and you can start running in that cutscene and start shooting beams it doesn't really save any time but it looks funny yeah it kind of looks funny especially when you get out of this menu yeah so watch for the glitched <laughs> sprite yeah there's still your shots from your pistol now you're upgraded and like your shots also get kind of upgraded mid there and the game is kind of confused which sprite to use now. And yeah, now we're basically at full power. Um, we have the three unknown items we got earlier are now in our possession. The gravity suit, the plasma beam and the space jump. So yeah, basically we're at like all upgrade, like all our abilities. And now it's only kind of a matter of getting the rest of the items and defeating the last boss. Yeah, so we're gonna real quick go and get... Uh, oh, oh, oh. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty tight already and just yeah. missing, missing a jump there, I probably was like frames away from losing that chance break. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go get uh, a set of power bombs and then go back out into the, uh, into the main world of Zeebs, uh, collect a couple of items, then come back uh, to fight the final boss. It is a pretty cool moment when you play this casually because all of the pirates have been like, they're generally like really scary and do a lot of damage. But when you get your full suit uh, with all the upgrades, they're like not even close to a threat anymore. Yeah, they kind of just melt when you have when you have all the beam upgrades, including including plasma. They just can't do anything anymore. Yeah, it's kind of a power moment. And just the way Sam has got empowered by the Chozo, Save the Children is also trying their best to help children <laughs> all around the world. Smooth the transition. Children are some of the most vulnerable people in society without a voice for themselves. And Save the Children helps give them their voice and speak for them when they cannot. Your donation goes towards the global fight to end the suffering of children everywhere that grow uh, and go through global education, health, and protection programs. So thank you very much. Yeah, so there's not gonna be a lot going on here for <laughs> like uh, uh, a couple of minutes until we get to power bombs. Or at least there are a lot of pirates to kill and then like small optimizations. Yeah, there's like nothing specifically that like needs explanation. We're just going back through the entire ship and like he said, just kill a lot of these pirates. And get this diagonal missile? Oh no. Yes, and while you are killing pirates, I can remind our viewers about the great prizes they can uh, win when uh, with their donation. For example, two nice oil paintings, such as the Italian plumber sitting in issue at an autumn evening or a still life of mankind conquering uh, the sky. Great paintings, oil paintings with some Mario sprites inside. They should be in every art gallery outside. And with a minimum donation of $35, that is if your total amount is at least $35 for this event, you have a chance to win one of these amazing prizes. Yeah, so one small curious thing here is that uh, we are forced to take a refill later. Uh, so because of that, it's actually optimal to use as many supers as possible rather than normal missiles. If you can, because supers do more damage. And like, it's the only thing that matters for the time it takes to refill is the number of ammo you need to refill. Uh, and coming up, we're gonna get uh, our power bombs. Uh, we are also... There's also a yellow door right here that we need to use the power bombs to get through, usually. However, we are going to use Ice Beam again to clip through this door. Yeah, the second yeah. like big glitch of the run. It is not really faster, per se, uh, but it, 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 does, oh, oops, it does save a power bomb. 
which is really big because we don't have many of those. We are really short on supply on power bombs, so getting that one extra power bomb there actually opens up a completely different route. Yes. Uh, that lets us skip uh, a bit of drop RNG later on. Uh, it's overall a more more consistent route. It's it's not technically faster if you get the good RNG later, uh, but you can't really count on it unless you're going for like really really top tier times. Yeah, in a certain other GBA Metroid, um, the game like throws power bombs at you. Like you can't even use all of them. Yes. And in this game, they're pretty. Uh, rather, like, you don't have that many, you kind of need to be really careful. They're a really precious resource, and we kind of have yeah. to map out where where it's reasonable to use a power bomb and where it's, it's really bad. To keep in mind, no enemies in this area drop uh, power bombs. Uh, pirates don't drop anything at all, ever, and the bamboos only drops, like, basic items. So the only way to get power bombs back here is to take uh, a refill at a save room. So we're gonna, we are forced to do that once. So we're able to go down here and use our extra power bomb here for uh, a different way. Otherwise, we would just go back outside uh, right away and come back here much later, uh, right before the end. It's pretty interesting. This game is quite old, like old, kind of, but... I mean, it's 15 years old now. You can call that old, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but throughout the years, like, even now, there's there's people still find, like, some new tech and some new stuff. For example, the ice clip through the door he just mentioned. Uh, back when I used to speedrun this game a little bit, I, it, it wasn't the thing. And that's, like, I don't know, like, two years ago or so, maybe? So it's really cool how... Even for a 15-year-old game, there's still new techs and new little things and optimizations being found. Yeah. It just shows you that like even old games still uh, have their like loyal communities. Um, I kind of failed to mention, but since we're able to clip through doors with Ice Beam, uh, you might wonder why we don't do that all the time. Uh, and there are a couple of answers for that. For first. It only works on the doors to the right, um, and it's not actually that useful in a lot of places to clip through a door. Um, and for the second, it is sub-pixel perfect. Like the enemy position that you freeze need to be on a very specific sub-pixel. Uh, and just that room, uh, if you get the enemy to stop on a certain frame, which you can do in your stand in you know, like a, a pretty big pixel window, uh, you're uh, you're good to go. So in that in that room. It's useful, and it's the only room where, where we managed to make it useful. Like the other... Uh, I think. Okay, this trick, I have a single attempt to do this trick. If I don't get this first try, I cannot retry it. And I'm gonna have to do something else. Yeah, okay, cool. Nice! <laughs> yeah, because your power bomb breaks the, the tube, the, the glass tube. You you cannot repeat what he just did if you yeah like he said you can try it once and if you get it cool if not you lose what thirty seconds or depends more? on what you do again the <laughs> the optimal way to get the uh, the backup there is to take a completely different route <laughs> um, yeah. but you can just like go and get that energy tank the slow way and not have to think about learning like five different routes to run the game yeah it's it's pretty nerve-wracking since like there's there's the the tube breaks permanently and after the tube is broken there is not enough space to get a speed booster anymore so you have to get it uh, a different way Bang, thanks i bet one of the reasons why you got this trick on the first try was because of this amazing monitor you're using <laughs> from <laughs> viewsonic elite because <laughs> viewsonic elite is one of our sponsors and uh, partnerships are geared, to, uh, geared toward improving gaming experiences and in this case also speedrunning experiences. They are trying to bring a positive impact towards the community, whether it's esports, modding, speedruns, LAN parties, 
whatever you can name. And we are proud to have them as our sponsor, as one of our sponsors here for ESA Winter 2020. I can actually vouch that this monitor feels better for me than the monitor I was practicing on. So uh, yes, this is this is working out. I oh no, oh, that's what happens when you start to be positive about anything. <laughs> Uh, thankfully, I, I did break this box, so getting another speed booster is not that big of a deal. But yeah, if you jump like very high, there's possibly go too high. Yeah, getting the power bomb up here requires kind of a like you need to do this diagonal ball spark at like kind of the uh, perfect position, or otherwise you bonk into the, like the blocks and you don't like clear all of them to get up there. Yeah, that's another item that's really hard to figure out casually. Like you can just oh, see yeah. that there's a power bomb up there and some speed blocks and you're like, how? How am I supposed to break these? What do you want me to do? Like, yeah, then then they try to go just make a regular like uh, shine spark up there and it's not like it's it's not working and then you're like, hey, what? No, how? it needs to be ball. So <laughs> yeah. And the game doesn't even tell you that you can spark as a ball. Which is, this is the only metro game where that is possible. Yeah. And the game doesn't tell you that it can. It just tells you that you can uh, you can jump as a ball uh, when you have high jump. But it doesn't tell you that it lets you do a shine spark. Yeah, so there are three mechanics which are kind of big in this game, which the game never explicitly explains to you. And all of them are used in the speedrun because all of them are pretty cool. Or like pretty useful. Yeah, this area, by the way, is where uh, Mother Brain exploded. That's why everything looks kind of yeah, so everything is wrecked. broken. And we kind of just come back here quickly to grab a few items. And then the the green acid, even with gravity suit, you s take damage because it's like lava, which got like exploded and it turned to like like I don't know. It don't evolved know. It's into super lava. Yeah, super As lava. Acid lava. Acid lava, and not even your gravity suit can handle it. No, it's crazy. It, but that's uh, the only like little area of the game where it has this uh, green super acid lava thing. Yeah. So sadly, uh, also when you get space uh, space jump, you cannot wall jump anymore. Oh yeah. Which is kind of a problem. It would have been useful in that room, like the tall uh, shaft going back up, since wall jumping would be faster than space jumping is. But like it's it's not possible to perform anymore. And basically what we're doing now is just, as you see in this room and many other rooms before, uh, we're just picking up items now that we either could not access earlier or it's just easier or like faster this, to this collect is my, now. This is my personal pet trick. No one else does this. Uh, it saves 10 frames sometimes. Uh, sometimes. It, is, it, is, it is really difficult to do. You need to press, uh, you need to press A. Then release A and then press A again within four frames to get that. No, most normal people would just do a <laughs> ball spark. Yeah. Uh, but I just really like doing that trick. Hashtag just drag things. Things. I mean, it's kind of cool. There, things, there are things. like there are like really stupid tricks that like technically save time but are prohibitively hard to do and like you need to get it first try for it to be useful and stuff. Uh, but some people just pick up these tricks anyway and like do them run because they think they're cool and stuff. And I, I like that about <laughs> like that's a pretty common thing in in both the GBA trades, right? With people doing nightmare and space boost and whatnot. Oh. Yeah, here is a very useful little shortcut to go from like the two like main areas uh, of like at the start. So you don't have to use like the long elevator systems and stuff. Yeah. So this power bomb yeah. is the only power bomb in the game that is uh, outside of Chisodia and not uh, hello, uh, not protected by power bomb blocks. So we've been trying to oh, we've been trying to uh, to get that for a, a long time, like trying to be able to get that before without having gravity suit, but it's. It's just not really possible. There is a really glitchy way of doing it where you can like you die mid the door transition and then you're in some kind of weird zombie hover state, and you can technically grab, grab the power bomb, but you do you die while doing it, so it, like you don't actually get it. Yeah, that would be like the holy grail of uh, of zero mission speedruns if we could get power bombs earlier. <laughs> okay. 
it was so late, so it didn't matter. Uh, that's also a lot. That uh, space boost is a lot harder than it looks. Uh, it saves a minuscule amount of time, but it, it just flows better. <laughs> it flows better. <laughs> I'm gonna stick to that. That's the that's the statement I'm going for. What? That happened earlier too. Oh, okay. I want to say never happened before, but it has now happened twice. Oh, I thought I ran too early. Now the same room again, just in the reverse. Uh, doing the space boost here instead of shine sparking saves about a third of a second, I think. But it's so worth it. It's <laughs> it's swaggy. Pretty yeah. And again, we just plow through these guys now that we have the full beam upgrade. Yeah, pretty much. At this point, there's like no real enemy that is kind of dangerous. I guess like the black pirates are sort a bit of black pirate, annoying, yeah. but you can just like, run away from them. Yeah, they're only like a handful, like four or so throughout the entire like gun, uh, the entire game. They're just really tanky, and they don't take damage from any missiles or power bombs or anything. Just just plasma beam and nothing else. So we're gonna take a quick. We actually found this ball spark by watching the the demo mode at the, like at the title screen. Oh the, really? Yeah, where the game just does things, and someone yeah. noticed that. Oh, this does this ball spark, and we as runners had not realized that these were speed blocks. <laughs> Why are we not doing? And that? we were like, wow, that's kind of cool. We should do that in runs. <laughs> it saves a little bit of time. It actually changed the entire uh, route to north. Oh really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Saving about 10 seconds. I then I guess thanks game for yeah. showing us. That was uh, about when when I started running, which is what I said the the route renaissance where we just kind of like went through like we realized that all the old runs didn't really test the routes. They just kind of made something up and then like went with that. Oh, uh, yeah, and then like then we went through a lot of testing uh, to find out which routes are viable and which are not. Uh, yes. So we're going back into Chisodia real fast to get the most out of the way item. Uh, this is like if we were able to get power bombs early, we could grab this when we're here the first time. Uh, but now we need to go back, and there like there's not nothing else over there, so you're just gonna run there, and it's gonna take forever. After this, this ball spark is kind of kind of tricky. Um, but after this, there's like nothing happening, so you can you can read the donation. Yes, we got a ten dollar donation from mod three six six. Say, awesome zero mission run, Dragon Fangs. These bombs jump. These bomb jumps were absolutely amazing. By the way, did you know there is a donation incentive for which gun to use during the Cuphead run gun run later during the event? My money is on the spreadsheet. How about you guys? Well, you can donate for that. And the choices you have are either the just mention spread shots, the roundabout, the law bar, or the charger. This is the first donation going towards the spread shot. If you want to see another gun, just donate to that and you can see it later on. So, you just called the other item the most out of the way, but is it really? Yes. <laughs> I feel like the I'm item we're sure. going towards right now is like the most out of the way. Well, yeah, I'm 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 referring to the the power bomb we're going to right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean technically also the power bomb in Norfair is really out of the way, um, but like the, we we wish really wish we could grab that early. This is just being able to grab this early would just be like a convenient, and we just have to go through all these rooms that we went through as suitless, but now we're full power, so we don't have to scare at all. We we really no scare. I'm amazed the pirates are still brave enough to like try and stop me at this point. <laughs> yeah, so up here at the very end, up here, there's a power bomb. There's a power bomb tank. And like like who put that there? Like come on. And and then we go back. Yeah, now all the way back. That's quite a annoying item. 
And now we kind of went full circle because yeah. um, we have been here before. And we go back to the ship now again, yes. kind of the same way. Going back to the end of the game, uh, there are like two items left, I think. There's like one power bomb tank and one E tank left, only, and then we'll be at 100%. Oops. I'll see. Uh, we'll see if I can remember. My my fingers remember, so we'll, we'll be fine if we get there. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, real quick grab this power bomb here, which we would love to grab earlier, uh, but since we only have one speed booster in this room, this is the room where we had the one-time trick. Oh, I did that too far left, so I'm gonna hit the thing. Just a uh, standard moving through these. Having to actually space jump here this time. And we used to, in the previous routes, we used to have like uh, shards about where it was reasonable to use power extra power bombs here. Uh, but with the route we're using now, we just have. All the power bombs we need. We'd like we, if we have extra power bombs by now, they're just ma basically a big waste. And there, there are no real rooms where we can save any time by having extra. Yeah, so we're go now going to like kind of the last items of the game, which are conveniently r like really near the last boss of the game. They're pretty close to each other, which is kind of nice. This last item is actually really difficult to grab. Uh, it's, it's like half halfway a meme in the community where you want to go for the, the difficult version of getting this, which is probably the one most people did casually. Uh, there is, uh, you can instead, like you want to space jump past a couple, like a bunch of lasers. Uh, and if you hit any of them, the alarm triggers and you can't get the item, so you need to get, move out of the room to reset the alarm. Uh, and most people would just space jump through that normally, but you can use a shine spark. Like you can go go back up after going down and like store a shine spark and shine spark through it. But that's actually a lot slower. Uh, we used to think it was faster way back when we just assumed shine sparks were faster than everything else, but it's actually like five seconds slower. And, and he is normally, going for the meme here. Okay, halfway through. Now get back. No. <laughs> <laughs> I used to practice going back and forth. Uh, it's honestly way easier to go back than to go and get there. Yeah, if you jump through there and you like into one of the trip wires, there's like a gate coming down in front of the item, and you kind of need to go out of the room, reset it, and try again, which obviously loses some time. Okay, now we're gonna figure out if we have a hundred percent or not. Because yeah. Uh, Mecha Ridley in this game, if you have 100% gains, triple the health and deals double the damage. So if he dies really fast, we're gonna know that uh, he was not 100%. We are clear. Yeah, this looks like 100% here. Yeah. What a difficult last boss. You can clap for that, you can clap for that. Thank you. Yeah! Oh no, okay. <laughs> it's possible to lay a bomb, bomb there in such a way that it, it opens the door during uh, the text box. Was that one too early? That was way too early. Uh, I kind of couldn't hear my audio cue because people were clapping, which I asked them to do, so that was just <laughs> my fault. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's not like. It doesn't even save a second. No, it saves like two frames. It looks cool though. Yeah, that's true. Like. Like he said earlier, there are a lot of like swag strats who save like uh, a bunch of frames. And we're gonna try to get the escape spark here. This is actually kind of tricky. Uh, first of all, we need to get a shine break, break a block, and store a shine spark. Nice. Okay, and then we need to do some platforming up here. 
Perfect. Okay, and then we pulse park. Yeah, this right here is fast and swag. And it's like at the very end of the run, so that's like a, a good finisher. And the actual final boss of the game, the Black Pirate. Yeah. Mostly trivialized with uh, all the beam cakes. There's kind of a way to cheese the guys and, and time, by the way. Time. Woo! Uh, 114 with perfect stealth. That's that good time. That's <laughs> better than I expected. That's that was really good. This pirate is really trying to stop us. Who would win, a big ship or one piratey boy? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the lore in the community is that that is the same pirate that also uh, like just doesn't react when you shoot him during suitless, <laughs> and he's trying to <laughs> he's trying to overcompensate for not <laughs> doing his job. I will stop you. I, I swear. Even if I die. I failed. I failed the pirates once. I will not fail them again. Uh, and then he fails very spectacularly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of poetic. It is, yes. Uh, so that's the mission. We kind of want to uh, watch the credits, if possible, to see if the in-game time. Uh, but it's it like take too long. It's like two minutes of credits. During that, you can plug a few things if you want. Sure, just like Samus saved. Hopefully, all the items from the saved space pirates save the children is trying, well, to save the children. And hopefully also 100% of them. Because some children are living in conflict or emergency situations, such as natural disasters or major pandemics. And these are even more vulnerable to exploitation, abuse and violence. Safe children helps children who are moving across borders, living on the streets, or in refugee camps to provide them with a better life, hopefully, one day. Also, when crisis strikes, Save the Children is one of the very first organizations to be there because children are the most vulnerable, vulnerable people on our planet and need to be saved first. Any shoutouts? Um, nah. <laughs> <laughs> can, I sh can I shout out myself? Is that <laughs> no, like the the, yeah, I, the I, entire stream mission community is really there's like a bunch of nice people. Uh, John and Phil, Sam the Digital, uh, Destructor. Um, there's there's so many people and, and the community is Box really Meister nice. Boxmeister who's Box here. is who's in the the venue but didn't have time to yeah, be he's in here. Occupied with volunteer work, I think. Uh, so we have a Discord that's really friendly to new people. If you want to try to learn the game, there are multiple tutorials on uh, all the different categories, and everyone's really helpful. And we just have a grand old time. Um, and you can look at this uh, excellent drawing of Samus drawing her parents doing the honk. It's honk. cute, though. Honk? The no. Memes. Yeah, we can see, uh, since we, we kind of already confirmed uh, through Mecha Ridley's help that we have 100%, we can just, we can uh, just see the see here time, which is sure. not Ooh, that can big. we guess in-game time? I'm going to 52-something? 52, 52 yeah, 30? 52 30. Oh, okay, that was not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I was way off. I mean, the 30 was kind of close. Yeah, 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 it's just a minute off, it's fine. Oh, by the way, did you know Samus is a girl? <gasps> what? Metroid is a grill? Metroid is grill? <laughs> but yes, so yeah. uh, that was Serum Mission. Thank, uh, thank you for watching. That's what we had. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs>